Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get into that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel, for supporting me, for saying such wonderful things about me, and for being such wonderful people. Thank you very much. I have four items for today's news. The first one is titled, Why the Media Ignore Anti-Semitism. It's a fairly long article in the Americans, the Association of Mature American Citizens. And I want to read one paragraph to you. The double standard at work in mainstream media has been impossible to ignore and is a sign of a deep moral failing in the profession of journalism. When it comes to threats and attacks against Jews, integrity is sacrificed on the altar of ideological conformity. Thus, the self-proclaimed seekers of truth become handmaidens to barbarity and the world's oldest and most destructive hatred. It's an interesting article. I would suggest you read it if you're interested in that sort of thing. The second article, the title is Brazilian Judge Pushes Nationalist Conspiracy Theory to Weaponize Federal Police Against Defenders of Free Speech. And I have some highlighted in this as well that I want to read to you. Matter of fact, every one of the four articles that I have, I have highlights. <coughs> Excuse me. So in this one, yesterday, a Brazilian Supreme Court justice, who is also the president of the Superior Electoral Commission, lashed out angrily at ex-owner Elon Musk and even have at an event heavily promoted by Globo News, Alexandre de Moraes claimed that Musk is part of a vast extremist conspiracy to undermine Brazil's sovereignty and democracy. He claimed that Musk was an irresponsible mercantilist motivated solely by profits who had united with extremist Brazilian politicians. It's interesting to me, and I would think it would be to you too, that uh, whenever someone disagrees with the government, they're an extremist. Just off the bat, before they say anything else, they're extremists. But there's no evidence of any conspiracy. Musk did not know I would publish the Twitter files Brazil, nor did the Brazilian politicians who reacted to them. And many of the politicians and journalists who de, de Moraes is demonizing as extremists are advocates of freedom of speech, including the right to criticize de Moraes. <laughs> but freedom of speech means nothing if it does not protect people and ideas you disagree with. You know, we have a saying in, in the United States, inside of the military, we have a saying, uh, I, I may not agree with what you say, but I will defend your right to say it with my life. That's the motto, I suppose you could call it, of many American service people. I may not agree with what you say, but I will defend your right to say it with my life. That's how strongly we feel about freedom of speech in America, and it should be that way worldwide. If people are not allowed to speak, then we don't have freedom. If we aren't going to allow people to criticize democracy, elections, and vaccines, how will we ever know if they are bad? If people are spreading false information about democracy, elections, and vaccines, the best way to deal with the false information is with accurate information, not censorship. It's very easy to present facts that will make someone look like a fool. But if you don't have the facts on your side, that's that's an old saying in the legal profession. If if you if the facts are on this is a, a saying that the American legal profession has. If the facts are on your side, pound the facts. If the facts are not on your side, pound the table. <laughs> the real extremist spreading disinformation here is De Moraes. If Musk were solely motivated by money then he would not have stood up to De Moraes, which resulted in the Brazilian government halting all advertising on X, 
the resignation of ex's top lawyer in Brazil who feared for his safety and may result in Di Maria shutting down X in Brazil. So how does Musk benefit from that? Musk has taken extraordinary and historic actions to protect free speech. So too has the U.S. Congress. I don't know if I'd agree with that. Now it's time for Brazil's Congress to act against the anti-democratic extremism of De Moraes. It must do so before the extremist De Moraes starts arresting his political enemies and shuts down X and thus free speech in Brazil. I don't know, is, is X that important to free speech in Brazil? I, you know, if you're from Brazil, tell me. I, just, I don't know if it is or not, uh, I, and I don't know if I'd take their word for it. Uh, I usually like to find some kind of support for statements that people make. The third article that I have is Google fires 28 employees involved in a sit-in protest over $1.2 billion Israeli contract. Now, I admit to a certain amount of schadenfreude with this one. It cracks me up that Google, <laughs> that Google and their employees are all so uh, ready to censor anybody that doesn't agree with their political views, and yet their own employees <laughs> get censored by the company when they try to protest what the company is doing. That just, the, the, the hypocrisy of it just cracks me up. Google has fired 28 employees over their participation in a 10-hour sit-in at the search giant's offices in New York and Sunnyvale, California, to protest the company's business ties with the Israeli government, the Post has learned. The pro-Palestinian staffers who wore traditional Arab headscarves as they stormed and occupied the office of a top executive in California on Tuesday were terminated late Wednesday after an internal investigation. Google Vice President of Global Security Chris Rachow said in a countrywide memo, they took over office spaces, defaced our property, and physically impeded the work of other Googlers, Rachow wrote in the memo obtained by the Post. Their behavior was unacceptable, extremely disruptive, and made coworkers feel threatened. And so they were fired. And well, they should have been. But you know, wouldn't it be nice if our government would do that to the protesters that block the streets and do all the other things like firebombing federal courthouses and that sort of stuff? Wouldn't that be nice? Uh. And of course, Google supports that, but not when it comes to their own business. No hypocrisy there at all on the part of Google. And finally, I have something uh, about FBI statistics. <coughs> Excuse me. This is by John Lott, who I've mentioned him, I think, once or twice before. He's an economist who, who specializes in research on crime and guns. And he wrote this article, How Reliable Are the FBI's Report? Of violent crime data, there are some major problems. And what he has found when he goes through this, and I'm just scrolling through here to show you, it, it's a, uh, you have to understand economists are math nerds, and so there's a lot of mathematical data in here, but what he's basically showing you is that the FBI is fudging the data. Uh, there's no other way to put it. They're fudging the data. They're trying to make it look like there isn't as much violent crime in America as there is because it's bad for Biden. And they support Biden. And so because they're a corrupt and partisan organization, they're going to do whatever they can to support their side and to denigrate the other side. So they're producing statistics that are now false. How nice, huh? We used to be able to depend upon the FBI to be honest with us, but that's, and of course, I don't know if that's a, even was true back then. I never really checked, but it's quite obvious now that they're not being honest. Anyway, that's the news for today. And I pray for you, my viewers, that you will have an abundant life, that you will live a long time, that you'll be healthy, 
and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, you will make your requests known to God, and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.